Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason, and this is part two of the Bible study titled Power. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 1. And he said unto them, that is Jesus, Verily I say unto you, that there are some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So here we have power being related to the kingdom of God. And Jesus relating this to the time when he shall return at his second coming. And there were those who would not believe Jesus. Those who would not accept Jesus. And these were the religious ones of the day. But Jesus was making it very clear that there would be a time which would come. And even though there were those who would have physically died, they would still have to come to face Jesus as the judge, rejected him during his, his earthly ministry, and it will be Jesus who is the one who would, will be demonstrating the power, the authority of Almighty God as he brings his judgment upon those who have rejected him. So that is a clear, clear warning. Clear warning, yes, at the time, to the religious ones. But that clear warning still stands today because it is included in the, in the Word of God, the sealed Word of God. And that which Jesus has said even long, long ago in his earthly ministry, will come to pass. Otherwise, he would have just been another man. Another man who was just speaking, speaking without authority. Because he was a man, it would have been a man who did not have the divine authority speaking through him. move on as it were now to go go back a little about when Mary with the angel the archangel came to see Mary and to to speak to her about that she would have a child and St. Luke's Gospel chapter 1 and read from the 30th verse and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast find fa found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Here we have this wonderful revelation to Mary that she will have this child and this is so clear as to who this child should be a child who would be very much of the line of David the, prof the prophecies in the Old Testament that the Messiah would be of the line of David. This is why we can have the utmost trust in the Word of God. Because the Word of God has been proved, it has been tested, it has been, ful has been fulfilled, and more is still being fulfilled, and has to be fulfilled. That is the confidence that we have in this precious, precious Word of God. And that which was said to Mary did come to pass. Because he was to reign, he was to be a king, this Messiah. And the Holy Ghost, we're told, shall come upon Mary. And the Holy Ghost did come upon Mary. Because this was the supernatural workings of the Holy Ghost, the conception there that Mary received the Holy Ghost and the birth of Jesus, that the child that she would have she was told he will be called the Son of God. And how we see this in the teachings of Jesus during his earthly ministry. That he is seen as the Son of God. He is seen as deity. He is seen as the one To be born of God, having left that throne where he had that wonderful, wonderful fellowship with the Father. Oh, let us not try to tear apart the Word of God, because the Word of God is so precious. It is more up-to-date than your, your newspapers or your television programs because what God has said must be fulfilled. And that is the proof that Jesus came and he came because he is God. And we move on, still in St. Luke's Gospel. And we're coming now to the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. In Luke 24 and verse 49, a verse which so much which calls itself Christianity today does not believe. And because it does not believe, it does not have the power. It does not have the unction from on high. It does not have that power of the Holy Ghost.
And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. There are those who, who make out that it's not the Holy Ghost is not for today, is not for enduring, enduring with the power of God, is rejecting the Holy Ghost as a person, is rejecting the Holy Ghost as the third person of the Godhead. Every bit of the Godhead as the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is so, so sad because without that endowment from on high there is no power in preaching, no power in ministry because it is the denial that the Holy Ghost would come and fulfill these words, this promise of Jesus. That when the Holy Ghost did come on the day of Pentecost, it was not just for then, it was not just limited to those who heard this message from the Lord Jesus in the upper room. It wasn't just for the, his apostles at that time or his disciples at that time because Saul who became Paul the evidence was there that he had received the baptism in the Holy, Holy Ghost. That there is that evidence that not just in the early centuries of Christianity were those who were endued with power from on high, but also it is for today. It has been in the more recent times so evident in men like Smith Wigglesworth who gave great emphasis upon the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And men like Rhys Howells you can't say that he didn't have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost came and, and made himself known to him, made it so clear to him that when I come in, you go out, because I come in as God. So the Holy Ghost is equally as, as God, and he has to come in. And without this revelation of the need of the baptism or the receiving of the person of the Holy Ghost. Whichever way you look at it, whether as Smith Wigglesworth received or as Reese Howes received, they still receive the same Holy Ghost. And they received a person the person of God. And it is that person who took of their lives. They provided a body. Have you provided your body? Do you know that he has come in and you've gone out? Because there's no room. Two people cannot live in the same body. It's absolutely impossible. And when the Holy Ghost comes in, 
he comes in as God and he will deal to the bottom of the old selfish nature and bring step by step as dealing with each area which is still the old selfish life he will bring in the divine nature he'll change the old human nature into the divine nature and bring into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Holy Ghost was sent to make known the Lord Jesus Christ yes you might say oh you're going very very deep here but yet this is in line with the scriptures Christ in you now Christ is Jesus Christ is somebody separate to yourself so how can those who make themselves out to be Christians and reject the Holy Ghost the baptism in the Holy Ghost the person of the Holy Ghost for today question yourself should you not accept that the Holy Ghost is a person to be received today to live his life through those who have come and said basically you do it Lord of myself I cannot do it so let's move on now to St. Jo John's Gospel and the first chapter and verse 12 that as many as received him now we're talking about Jesus because we're still John still is relating to Jesus's earthly ministry to them gave he power to become what the sons of God even to them that believe on his name as we've just been looking at the Holy Ghost in relation to power now we're going back a step to look at Jesus in his earthly ministry what he came to do and it was to receive him to receive him for salvation to receive him through his redemption the offering of his blood the perfect atonement the only acceptable offering for sin and sinners and it comes about by receiving him not receiving something from someone else but receiving the person of God the Son he alone can forgive sins no Pope no priest Jesus God the Son alone because he and he alone was able to give the divine blood as that perfect offering for sins that repentant sinners could be cleansed by that royal that divine blood from every filth every sin every stain to the extent that they're not just forgiven do you realize this that the blood of the Lord Jesus cleansing 
away every sin and every stain that through repentance you were then seen by God himself as having been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and he sees Jesus in you and because he sees Jesus in you this is why Jesus can say that this is the power the power of God to become a son of God become sons of God is there anything more wonderful than that to be looked upon by God to receive God because God has become your father you become a son of God and it is that believing to believe and to belong to go beyond just believing but actually know that you belong Jesus let's move on a bit more so just so remind remind myself I'm still in John's gospel yes chapter 10 and verse 18 now this is Jesus very much speaking about himself from uh, verse 14 I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the father knoweth me even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also must I bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again no man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again this commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus, yes, he, he followed what the Father wanted during his earthly, Jesus' earthly ministry. Even though he had the power to take, to lay his life down or to take it up. He is the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ God the Son that he gave himself into the hands of the Father that the Father the Father's perfect plan would be fulfilled John chapter where are we now chapter 19 and verse 10 and we have someone else who thought they someone who thought they had power some earthly power and that was Pilate during Jesus' trial then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greatest sin. So in other words, Pilate could have done nothing without the permission 
of the Father. And it is in these days and has been down the centuries that is what God permits and he allows to happen. That ultimately, although there seem to be great evil powers at work, ultimately, they kingdoms come to their end, empires come to their end, and there's one at this time where God is rocking the world. And that which thinks it has power, the European Union, God is rocking it. God is bending it. And God is breaking it. That it will be seen that there is no power there when God himself comes against it because it has overstepped the mark and overstepped the mark by being against the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, and being against the gospel, being free to go to every creature, has placed itself are sought to place itself above God. That satanic, satanic power. Yes, I'm saying power, but it is satanic. It's to be swept away. It is crumbling before Almighty God. O oh God, ultimately, Thy plan is being fulfilled step by step. And that in these days, the world is being rocked. And only that which is in the Lord Jesus Christ, only that which has the Lord Jesus Christ at its centre, will stand Everything else, whether it be religion or humanism, whether it be the European Union, whether it be the Church of Rome or the Jesuits, whether it be the Freemasons or Mormons, it's on sinking sand because it is not in Christ. And that thy kingdom the kingdom of God alone will stand. And it is with this complete trust in your sealed word that you are given all the praise, all the honour and all the glory and that the Lord Jesus Christ will be preeminent at all times. Amen.